this stage of Inoue's career, where would you rank him on all of the fighters you've ever promoted from a skills perspective? Where does he rank? You know, it's it's scary what I've been what I'm seeing. He so overwhelms his opponents, really good opponents, uh, that he's right. Uh, I, that I I never seen a fighter of that size uh, uh, perform uh, the way he has. Uh, you know, maybe. Uh, a Salvador Sanchez uh, had that ability, but even then, he 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 didn't win all his fights by knockout. Uh, in a week, goes into these fights, he boxes the guys and then knocks them out. You know, is it, 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 what we're seeing in in a week is something really special. It's as special for boxing as Otani is for baseball. Another Japanese uh, athlete who is doing things in baseball that we've never seen before since Babe Ruth. So uh, again, Inoue is really, really special. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, we are uh, delighted to have played a part, play, playing a part in his career. This fight on May 6th in the Tokyo Dome is the first one in 30 years, first boxing match since uh, Tyson and Douglas uh, to be in the Tokyo Dome. When they announced the fight in Japan, the tickets sold out in one day. Uh, the, you know, the, the Japanese are not a very emotional kind of people, but they really uh, are emotional uh, for uh, in a way, uh, and uh, uh, the Boxing Writers Association has voted him Fighter of the Year for last year, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to make it to their dinner. Uh, and uh, so uh, when during the, and that's how we got involved during the pandemic, when they couldn't fight in Japan, uh, they brought him over to us because we were doing fights in the bubble. And so we got to know Inoue there, you know, in the United States. Uh, and he's a terrific, terrific young man uh, and, and, and one of the greatest fighters I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I actually had the pleasure of calling Inoue's fight against Maloney on the international feed uh, for ESPN. That one got to see him up close and personal as well too uh but you know when we go when we talk about the tokyo dome only special fights take place there in a way is the favorite but Luis neri is not going to be nowhere near the dog that buster douglas was do you but in a way is also taking this fight personally because of the history Luis neri has in the country and the uh misfractions that he's had uh, in previous fights there. What's the mindset, do you think, of Inoue for this one? And could we see a, 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 a different level of monster unleashed because the fight's a little more personal for him? I mean, how could there be a different level of monster when we've seen the monster? Uh, you know, his fight uh, in, this, in December, uh, uh, you know, he, he boxes for a couple of rounds, and then when he is ready, he just takes the guy out. I mean, Neri is a tough, tough Mexican fighter who will give him a go for a few rounds, and then in the wheel, knock him out. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it, it, I mean, people here in the United States who will be watching that fight on ESPN uh, Plus, uh, you know, even though it takes place in the early hours of the morning uh, 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 have a treat in store for them uh, because uh, you know it, 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 people live on the west coast they they get up in the morning and they put on ESPN plus uh, and they can watch that fight from the beginning you know even though it's already taken place so again and ESPN has told us 
that the audience for uh, an inner we fight, even though it comes at a crazy hour, uh, is very, very large. So, you know, bo uh, boxing fans know they are watching something special when they watch in a way. Mm -hmm. And you have the pieces to the puzzle to kind of keep in a way progressing down the line, 126 pounds. Is that the plan after the Neri fight, regardless of the decision for him to move to 126? No, no, he's going to no, that's not the plan. The plan is to keep him at 122 for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Then next year, to make an assessment if they want him to go to 126. Mm -hmm. You know, the Japanese don't decide these issues on emotion the way Americans do uh, or tend to do. Japanese figure it out, they calculate. Uh, and so I can't say even that he will go to 126. That decision won't be reached until early next year. Mm -hmm. And in a way, he's taken the mantle, uh, per se, as the pound for pound best in the top rank stable, perhaps from Vasily Lomachenko, who's going to be fighting May 11 against George Cambosis in Perth. May 11th in the United States, May 12th in Australia, Sunday afternoon. Right, right. And Lomachenko, he's now 36 years old and really hasn't done enough in the big ones of late. What are you looking to see from Lomachenko in this fight? And is the ideal next step for him to get this title to finally set up that fight with Shakur? Yeah, well, Loma is, uh, uh, is I believe, still a great fighter. You know, his fight with Haney, uh, I was watching that fight. I like Devin. He's a great fighter. But I thought Loma won that fight. Uh, but again, the judges decided uh, otherwise, and you have to respect the judge's decision. Uh, as Loma slipped a little, yeah, because people, uh, he's 36, he's not that really that old, but he had this long, long amateur career of almost 400 fights at the top level. Uh, so probably uh, he is not as good as he was maybe five years ago. Uh, he, George Camposa is a, is a live dog in the fight. Uh, he's a very good fighter. It's always very good shape. Uh, it's going to be a tough fight. Uh, and we'll see who comes out on top. I mean, uh, I'd love uh, having uh, Loma as part of top rank. I have great affection for him. Uh, you know, I think he's a tremendous guy, great family, great father, you know, just everything you want in a fighter. Uh, but he's in very, very tough with Camboza, who can, uh, you know, he couldn't handle Devin Haney, Camboza couldn't, but he certainly uh, handled uh, Teofimo. Mm -hmm. So, Again, and now he's fighting uh, in Australia again. Uh, so that's going to be a very, very interesting uh, match. And one of the Maloney kids is fighting for an interim title on that card. Uh, so it, I'm looking forward. I've never been to Perth. Been all over Australia, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne. Never been to Perth. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Is the next step after that the ideal winner of that fight to face Shakur Stevenson? I know Shakur has a date sometime in the summer, but it's also trying to find him the right opponents. Is that the plan to bring Shakur that fight, the winner of that fight? Well, Shakur is, is uh, fighting on July 6th uh, uh, in uh, uh, New Jersey. Uh, at, a, at the, the Prudential Center. Uh, we'll announce the opponent relatively shortly. And we've had a, a great run with Shakur, who's, you know, he's an incredible fighter with incredible skills. Uh, but our contract is over with the July 6th fight. 
hopefully will maintain uh, a relationship with Shakur uh, and uh, continue that. But he's a free agent after the July 6th fight. And so we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, for me, uh, to watch a uh, Lomachenko Shakur fight, because uh, I'm a boxing freak, I love boxing, would be such a treat uh, to see two skilled guys like that go at each other. Uh, so again, but that's in the future. Loma has a tough fight with Camboza and uh, uh, the opponent, uh, the guys tell me in, in the office that they've selected for Shakur is, 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 is a really good fighter. So again, after July 6th, uh, we'll take a look and see uh, whether we can do a fight, a unification fight, which it will be. Uh, and, uh, but again, uh, Shakur uh, clearly will be a free agent uh, after the uh, July 6th uh, fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, staying in and around that division, Bob, with some of the fighters we were just talking about, a newly crowned 140 pound titleist, Isak Cruz, said following his knockout of Rolando Romero that he would stay at 135 pounds for the right fights and specifically mentioned Lomachenko uh, while also calling out the likes of Teofimo Lopez. Uh, are either of those fights uh, interesting to you? Uh, and uh, want to get your thoughts on Isak Cruz and, and potentially making fights with him. Well, you know, Cruz is a good fighter. You know, he, He's, he's, he's a rough and tough guy. Uh, he fights for another promoter. But again, uh, he appears to have a very, very good uh, fandom, a good following. Uh, a lot of the people uh, at the fight uh, on Saturday who came to the fight came specifically to see Cruz. That's what was reported. Uh, so, yeah, it would be interesting. He's certainly in the mix. Uh, he isn't anywhere as near as skilled as either Shakur or uh, uh, Lomachenko or Tiafimo, but he has a, a, he fights, you know, like a Duran with guts and, uh, and you can't, it's very hard. Uh, to discourage him. So he's a live opponent for any of those guys. So yeah, we would love uh, uh, to uh, talk to Al Heyman uh, and use him uh, in our program. Uh, but again, that's down the road. Mm -hmm. And the best fighter at 140 pounds you might want to say Teofimo Lopez, but I think the boxing public might want to say Devin Haney, a fighter that you worked with set for several fights uh, last year and the year before that. Are you looking to bring back Devin Haney and re-sign him in order to make a lot more bigger fights with him, uh, with guys in your stable, considering Haney's a yeah, We're very fond of Devin. He's a terrific guy. His father, get along great with his father. I mean, it's pretty significant that the gymnasium that he chooses to work in is the top ranked gym in Las Vegas. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, certainly look forward uh, to working with Devin in the future. Uh, and uh, I think Devin and Tiafimo down the road is a major, major fight. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, the Haney's are great to deal with. They're very cooperative in the promotion, uh, and they represent the best of what boxing can offer. They're really good, good people, uh, disciplined and nice and cooperative. So yeah, sure. We look forward in the future 
to work with uh, Devin Haney. Mm -hmm. Your quick prediction on the fight, Haney and Garcia. April it's not even a fight. I mean, Garcia, I mean, I, I don't want to say anything, but, but, but Haney is a real fighter. And, uh, you know, I, I don't look at Garcia as being very much. Uh, but again, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But, you know, and he has a big following. Garcia does. He acts crazy uh, for whatever reason. But, you know, I'm an old school guy. And I think that uh, uh, Haney uh, is way too much for Ryan. That's what I think. And it appears, you know, Shakur obviously would be another great opponent for Haney. Well, we wanted to get your thoughts on Shakur as well, too. You mentioned he's a free agent, but you, you had some very nice words to say about him the other day. You said anyone who faces him, who faces him is like sentencing him to death <laughs> when discussing the, a, potent, a potential William Zapata fight uh, when Oscar De La Hoya made those call-outs. Uh, Stevenson appears to have reached the stage of his career where he really needs a significant opponent to rise to the occasion. Do, now that he's a free agent, do you think this is kind of that time where you make that happen? Well, I don't know. You know, we hope to continue promoting his fights, but he is a free agent. And that doesn't mean he's an enemy or anything like that. You know, it, sports is a business. Uh, you know, one of my favorite football players uh, has been uh, Barkley, Sakon Barkley, who played for the Giants. Now he's playing for the Eagles. Uh, I can't fault him for that because he went where the opportunity was greater. And uh, uh, I, I really believe that Shakur has developed into one of the great, great fighters of our era. And I really believe that if you put him with somebody like Zapata, who's a good fighter, but not a great fighter, that it's a no contest. And what I resented was Oscar, uh, after the Zapata fight, maybe because of over-enthusiasm, calling out Shakur when he had no intention, or Zapata had no intention, of fighting Shakur, and I don't bl blame Zapata because he knows that he can't beat Shakur. Mm -hmm. And let's move on to the granddaddy of them all, per se. May 18, Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight title. I know uh, it's been it's been a pretty quiet promotion outside of the entire rescheduling and the cut. Uh, and the war of wars that went back and forth for a few days. But other than that, pretty quiet. Uh, Mauricio, uh, uh, but some headlines were made recently when WBC President Mauricio Suleiman uh, called for an emergency petition to institute a six-judge panel for this fight, uh, trying to avoid a catastrophe, as he called it. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, having six judges for a fight of this magnitude? Uh, you don't. put in something like that for the first time if you're dealing with the major fight in the sport of boxing, which is the undisputed heavyweight championship. Maybe six judges are better than three. I doubt that, but maybe. But at least you experiment with that, with uh, fights that are not as prominent. You don't put, do something like that when you're dealing with your top fight from the standpoint of visibility, from the standpoint of importance. Because I don't know whether six judges are better than three. I, I don't know. And nobody really knows because it hasn't been done. So, Again, with all due respect to my friend Mauricio, who's a really good guy and loves the sport of boxing and has done a great job with the WBC, I wouldn't do it for this fight. 
I, I wouldn't say that you don't experiment with it for another fight, but I don't really believe that the judging becomes better because you have six judges rather than three. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems as if this will be a, a, only one fight for Undisputed because of the IBF situation that will unfold afterwards in, in the event of the immediate rematch. Uh, Fury recently said that the immediate rematch would be taking place within six months. Is there a date already penciled in for that rematch this year? That's a question that you should address to His Excellency Turkey al -Anshi. They They're probably going to hold it uh, in conjunction with the opening of the Riyadh season, which I believe starts in October, like the previous Riyadh season. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're going to look to do it in the summer when it's beastly hot in Riyadh, it'll probably have to wait uh, till October. Mm -hmm. and, and the following week, uh, you're going to have two cards. Uh, I know you've already had the kickoff press conference for Josh Taylor and Jack Catterall, which got rescheduled due to a Taylor injury. Uh, so the major storylines have already been established for that. But on the other side of the world, Christian Mabili, the, the fighter you just signed to top rank, he's going to be fighting Mark Heffron. You know, and you have a new contender at 168 pounds. Um, just curious how you plan on moving uh, Christian up in his career because he already has guys like David Benavidez who are ready to fight him. Just curious how you want to move up to Christian at, at, across 168 pounds. Oh. If he gets through the fight that he's going to have on the 25th, then uh, I, I, I believe that uh, we'll sit down uh, uh, with his other promoter uh, uh, and uh, uh, Camille Esteban and, and uh, figure out where we want to go. And I think we would want to go to the biggest fight out there either Canelo Alvarez uh, or uh, David Benavides. That would be a tremendous, tremendous fight. But Billy is, is fearsome in the ring. So he against Benavides would be a terrific fight. And uh, I think uh, Camille uh, feels the same way we do. No more messing around. Let's go for the brass gold ring. And that's what we're going to do. But you, you forgot in all of this uh, a fight that we're doing the same night but later uh, from San Diego uh, that I believe might steal everybody's thunder, and that's Navarrete never and Bohochik for the lightweight championship and Santion and Norman, two undefeated welterweights fighting will pack uh, the, uh, the arena in, uh, in San Diego. Uh, and uh, I, I, I can't be everywhere, so I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'll miss that fight. Hopefully, I'll be able to see it in Riyadh. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then, you know, these two great fights uh, in, on the 25th, uh, one in uh, Leeds and the other in... Uh, uh, in Canada, uh, and then, uh, I mean, boxing is blessed now with so many really, really good fights. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, you talk about a golden age for the sport. That's what we're really involved in. Mm -hmm. you're, you're definitely stacking the calendar. I, I know you haven't officially announced that June one fight against Arthur Betterbiev and Dimitri Bivol, but it, that's a very, very uh, intriguing fight as well too for the undisputed light heavyweight title. Uh, I know Betterbiev is your guy. It sounds like you're going to be in the David Benavidez business regardless of weight divisions because he's kind of lining up for both Mobili, for both Betterbiev. Uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, whether or not uh, you can work with David Benavidez in order to get him 
some of these fights that he's looking for since Canelo is off the table for now? Well, people forget that uh, we know the Bennett. I know David and I know the family because we promoted for years his brother, Jose, who unfortunately was shot in the leg and never was the same fighter. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, Samson is a good guy. We, we've worked over the years a lot with Samson. And uh, so we would love to have Benavides uh, fight Benavides if Benavides beats Bivol, which I believe he will, uh, and or uh, fight Mobili. So again, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously David's dream would be to go in with Canelo, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, but again, uh, 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 sure, David Benavides is a tremendous fighter, and we would love to see him fight uh, on our platform uh, with either uh, a better be off or uh, a Billy. Mm -hmm. Just curious, Bob, the entire boxing world has their opinion of why Canelo is not fighting David Benavidez. I want to get your thoughts on why you feel this fight isn't happening and what it needs to, what needs to happen in order for it to take place. Well, I don't know. I, I you know, I, uh, over the years, we've been very friendly with Eddie Reynosa because he trains, as you know, Oscar Valdez. And uh, I, I always have great, great respect for Eddie. He's a good trainer, good person. Uh, and I've met Canelo a number of times, particularly uh, when uh, Oscar's been fighting Valdez. Uh, I can't speak to that. I don't, you know, I've never discussed a fight with Canelo uh, or with Eddie, uh, a Canelo fight. Uh, so I'm not going to speculate as uh, to why he's doing this or why he's doing that. The answer is I really don't know. Like everybody else, I don't know, even though I know them as people and like them very much. But I don't know why he may uh, not want to fight Benavides or maybe wants to fight Benavides. I would like, obviously, if Mabila is, uh, uh, wins his fight on the, the 25th, uh, to have Canelo fight Mabila. But again, I don't know how he would feel about that. Mm -hmm. well, Canelo has done extraordinarily well in boxing. He's made a lot of money. And at this particular point in time, he can pick his shots. Absolutely. And I think um, you, at least you're giving Canelo an option with Mobili to, uh, considering he's guiding his career as he pleases, if he wants to look into the direction of Mobili, that could be something I'm sure that you would be uh, very much open to setting up and getting into the Canelo business as well. A hundred, a hundred percent. Just the way our friend uh, uh, Fernando Beltran uh, was uh, uh, amenable uh, to Manguilla, who's a terrific fighter, fighting Canelo. Uh, and uh, make no mistake about it, it was up to Beltran who's his real promoter, uh, Manguia's real promoter, uh, to make that fight. Uh, and Manguia uh, uh, fought for Golden Boy on Golden Boy's cards, and they did a very good job with him. But I don't think they have a contractual relations with him anymore. But that being said, uh, uh, they're involved with the Manguia uh, Canelo fight, which be a, it's not a walk in the park. I would favor Canelo in that fight, but it's not an out fight. I mean, McGee is in there with a real chance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, we're going to be some, seeing something really cool on that June 1 card with, again, all the promoters coming together, that Matchroom Queensberry 5-on-5 five five, uh, concept, uh, really interesting. Uh, have 
any discussions taken place for top rank to be involved with something similar with another promoter establishment? Well, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's nice to say it's the, it's the Queensbury team against the matchroom team, but you look at the fighters, they're not necessarily Queensboro fighters or matchroom fighters. You know, it's a good uh, label for that, but they're not guys who have fought uh, their careers on either Queensbury or Matchroom. Uh, it's a good concept, and uh, uh, His Excellency loved the concept. And if they wanted us to come up with five fighters uh, to fight either five of Eddie's fighters or uh, or five of Frank's fighters, and we could fill up our lineup with fighters that we don't necessarily promote the way they do. Yeah, sure. Why not? Mm -hmm. And Bob, we talked about the top rank uh, roster far and wide, but uh, we didn't really talk too much about Teofimo Lopez yet. I, it looks like he has a date coming up June 29, but again, didn't really have a spirited performance against Jermaine Ortiz, well, partly due to Ortiz not engaging in a way that or, uh, uh, Lopez would have liked. But uh, how do you plan on guiding Teofimo's career moving forward to make sure that he has the chances to prove himself at 140 against the likes of a Cruz, a Matias, and a Haney? Well, we have great matchmakers at top rank with uh, Trampler and Goodman and Carl Moretti. Uh, and we never expected Ortiz to fight the fight that he did against Teofimo. You know, you look at prior Jermaine Ortiz fights, he was a warrior. And, you know, the, the fight with Teofimo was terrible because Ortiz stunk him out. He wouldn't have engaged. So we have to get fighters who are willing to engage with Teofimo to make it really interesting. And I believe the matchmakers have come up with a very, very good opponent who's going to put Teofimo in a firefight uh, on the 29th of June. Uh, and I think TV was going to look great. But again, that's in the future. And uh, Evan, you know, gets pissed off if I talk about uh, fights that they haven't announced yet that we know are happening. But, you know, it's, it's hard to keep track of that because uh, for May and June and July, we're doing like four events a, a month. You know, that's a lot. And it's a lot for an old guy like me to keep in mind, you know. you, you, you But again, I think the June 29th fight uh, in Miami is going to really be something special. Mm -hmm. And again, we're just talking through two and a half months of fight cards, Bob scorching hot schedule throughout the spring and summer. Uh, it seems like it's going to be a, a big fight every weekend uh, with you guys. Uh, sometimes two fights on the two cards on the same night in different parts of the world. Um, congrats on bringing everything together and looking forward to seeing what the rest of the year looks like after these uh, cards unfold and, and we see who's the victors. Well, fortunately, uh, there's another sport called football. And when the football season uh, starts, uh, our work product uh, goes down because um, instead of doing three or four fights shows a month, we're down to one and sometimes two a month. And that gives us a chance to catch our breath. I mean, that's the way our schedule has been for many years. Uh, and uh, uh, that's okay because no company, even ours, can operate uh, the way we are doing in the spring and summer of this year 
over an entire year. That's just too many. I mean, it, I mean, it's uh, it, it's a special season now, and we're enjoying it. But again, come September, it, it'll calm down. Mm -hmm. And for those wondering, Bob, you know, we see you the opening bell, the first fight, the first four rounder against with guys perhaps no one might know, but you're sitting there front and center. We can see you uh, perhaps in an empty arena, you and Derek sitting next to each other. What keeps the passion for you at this age and stage of your career to be involved from, in every step of the operation, to what, witness every fight, to uh, ju just be involved in the capacity that you are? Well, again, I like to watch every fight because I hope to see uh, hidden gems emerge uh, in, in a lot of these fights because uh, I remember, uh, and I want to brag, but I remember uh, when Crawford was coming up and he was fighting way down on our cards, uh, I immediately spotted uh, how good he was. And so when a spot opened up because a fighter in the semi-main, which was televised, uh, fell out, we could put Crawford in there, uh, even though people said that he wasn't ready. And uh, he won that fight, and that launched his career. So I think that's important to be able to watch these kids uh, as they come up and you get confident about some of them uh, being great. Now, look, we got a, a whole group of young, young kids who are going to be terrific. Uh, you know, some won't, but I believe that many will. Like Abdullah Mason is really, really going to be special. Uh, and so how could I go put a fight card on and miss an Abdullah Mason fight? Uh, or uh, 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 the, the Vargas kid, Emil, Emiliano Vargas. A pleasure to watch these kids. And there's so many like them uh, that fight way down in the other crowd, like Troy Isley. You know, he started, he was a great amateur. He started uh, uh, slow, and now he's coming on, showing his real uh, characteristics uh, as, a, as a terrific fighter. So that he'll be ready uh, by the end of the year maybe to take on somebody like Janabek in the middleweight division. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you only can get that if you watch it as it's happening, you know? Uh, and and uh, I mean, the UFC fans watch the events from beginning to end. When we used to do fight shows in Japan, I mean, in China, uh, when we started at 10 in the morning, uh, the arena was packed and the fans came for every fight. In the United States, we're trying to get it back. We, it's a show and come for the beginning of the show. It doesn't cost you any extra, you know, it's silly. Why are you are you waiting uh, to come in for the semi-main and the main? Because those are the major fights. Come early and see these young people who will be the stars, and you can then uh, claim part of their uh, uh, career because you watch them uh, early on. So again, I I. I I think it's it's sad that boxing fans don't come for the first fight. 
And I'm not going to make that mistake. I come for the first fight and I watch all 10 fights or nine fights on the program and I enjoy it. And I believe that boxing fans, if they do that, they will thank me because they'll enjoy it, the experience even more. And remember, it doesn't cost a lot. Of, it doesn't cost any extra to watch nine or ten fights than to watch two fights. Mm -hmm. And you know that was a terrific anecdote. Of going back to the beginning of that with Terence Crawford, you built his entire career, and I'm I'm sure watching some of those early fights was uh, a, a part of that process. We know Terence is a free agent, and he's looking for a fight. Are you? For anyone wondering if he could come back to top rank and work with you guys, if, if just wondering if your if that relationship has been repaired and if you guys could be in the Terrence Crawford business. I, I never take anything personal, right? It's a business. So if we had the right fighter with the right money and it uh, satisfied Crawford, would we do a Crawford fight? Of course we would, you know? There's no animosity there. You know, a lot there in that case, things were said that shouldn't have been said on both parts. But again, uh, Terrence is a great fighter. Uh, and if we had something that really was appealing to him, I believe he would come back and do the fight with us. And we would certainly do the fight with him. Mm -hmm. Well, that's terrific to hear, Bob. It sounds like you have a lot of options, a lot of windows and doors to open some free agents out there that I'm pretty sure you'll be looking to sign and re-sign to set your calendar for the second half of the year. Appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, break everything down for what's coming up for top rank moving forward. And are, looking you, forward you going, are you going to be in Riyadh for the heavyweight championship? I'm, I'm trying to arrange my schedule and calendar as we speak. I have a little one at home. So a if, you're not, if you're not, if you're not, it's and it's not a second choice. It's going to be great. Go to San Diego for that show. That show, I think, kicking my ass because I can't be everywhere. But I'm, I hate missing that show. Absolutely, the San Diego one will definitely be more manageable for me for sure. Right, Bob. Thank you very much for the time. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thanks, Luke. See you soon, bud.